now let us assign the load so as a structure is subjected to earth pressure water pressure so these are parameters that varies with the depth so for this we have to define joint pattern now let us define the load that we have to assign so firstly we will define water pressure and then we have earth pressure okay now as we have defined joint pattern now we are able to assign non-uniform load to the surface so considering this as the elevation of the structure so you can see that if we assume that the water pressure is up to this height okay and this being the overall height of the structure as h that is the water depth then the loading pattern of hydrostatic pressure will be triangular in nature something like this and the pressure at the base is gamma h that is where gamma is unit weight of water and the overall pressure is simply the area of the triangle 1 by 2 gamma h into h now let us see how the load assignment is done in sap so now let us apply the load so we will firstly apply water pressure so you can see the slab and the wall element which will be subjected to hydrostatic pressure r1 is selected for now now we will assign joint pattern first and then we will apply the surface load so now go to assign here you have joint patterns so first we will assign water pressure and what are these terms here so we'll go with xyz multiplier that is ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero and considering this uh, pattern value we'll assign this constant abcd and to assign this we have to select the joint not area only for example if i get previous uh, here you can see get previous selection so the element or the cell that has to be subjected with the hydrostatic pressure are selected but we are not able to apply this load because for this we have to consider the joint as the name suggests joint pattern so we have to select the joint of this area so select all now you can see we are getting the option to apply and you might think that we are only required to apply water load to a certain depth that is we are required to provide certain freeboard so we have an option here to use either all values or we can make zero negative values or we can make zero positive values so if we follow the loading pattern that is hydrostatic pressure so if we are up to considering this as a free board so this is the loading pattern so beyond this point the value is negative that is at this point the force will be zero and at this point it will be maximum and beyond this point it will be zero so we can simply select zero negative values so it will automatically make the values zero if the value comes to be negative so this is one of the uh, point that we have to consider while applying the load so we'll keep this as zero negative values now what are these terms a b c d so as we see that the pressure along x and y direction is not changing the pressure will change in z direction only so considering this equation the value of x and y will be zero if the load is changing along x axis and y axis then it will be with certain value that is to be calculated but for now the value of x and y will be zero only the value cz and d is to be considered and what about cz and d then now let us solve this equation so we are provided with equation as ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to p p is a constant and x y z are the variable so as i said the loading will not vary in x and y direction so the coefficient or the constant x and y will be zero automatically so the equation 
comes to be as cz plus d is equal to p and as i said considering the water depth up to this point that is so the triangular loading pattern will be something like this and considering the water depth as h the base will experience a pressure of gamma h gamma is the unit weight of water so considering this z is equal to 0 and this point as z is equal to h now we can solve this equation so at z is equal to 0 c into 0 plus d is equal to the value of constant or the pressure p is equal to gamma h so d is equal to gamma h and at z is equal to h now we have the value of d so c into h z is equal to h so c into h plus gamma h and the value of p so at z is equal to 0 the pressure will be 0 so this is 0 and finally we get c is equal to minus gamma h by h that means minus gamma okay now you can solve this and put the values so considering this let us input the value so constant d what i said the value will be 9.81 into h that is the water depth so what was the water depth 23.4 into 9.81 so this is the value of d and value of c will be simply the unit weight of water minus 9.81 don't forget to mention this value that is negative value if you provide positive value the result will be different mention the sign as well and use zero negative values that is the value beyond this point will be zero automatically and replace existing values if there is for now no there is no any existing value so apply so the joint patterns has been assigned now we have to assign load these are only the joint patterns now following this joint pattern we will apply the surface load and for which we have to select the previous selection that is selecting all this now go to assign and here you have a area load and in area load you will find surface pressure and okay let me clear this now we have to select the load pattern so it is to be provided as water pressure the loaded face so let me on the form shape so as you can see the gray color will represent the bottom face and the red color will represent the top face so the water pressure is to be applied on the gray face that will be the loaded face will be bottom okay and we'll apply the pressure by joint pattern and we'll assign water pressure and multiplier as one so if we put zero the load will be zero if we put uh, if we multiply the load as or if we put multiplier as 1 it will provide the value according to the joint pattern and if we are willing to assign load in the negative direction then we can put value as minus 1 now keep apply so you can see the pressure at base should be 229.554 so we'll check that firstly so as you can see the base slab is subjected to 229.55 because the base slab is uniform so the pressure at the base will be same and at the base of the wall also it will be 229.55 which will reduce or which will decrease subsequently with respect to the height so here you can see it is 179.49 and at 23.4 meter it will be zero and although we had selected this area but it is not subjected to any pressure because we restriction of zero negative values now we'll assign the earth pressure so in the figure you can see that we have earth pressure to a or we can say we have backfill to a certain depth so we have to apply that pressure to the wall now we'll select wall element only and I don't okay let us select all now let us select with joint as well so now go to assign area load and here we have uh, joint pattern sorry 
and we'll select earth pressure so the height up to which the backfill is provided is 7.1 from the base into that is the height as i said gamma into h so while assigning the soil pressure it is somehow same but we have to introduce a new term here that is coefficient of earth pressure and considering the backfill height as h the base pressure will be k that is coefficient either it can be active rest or passive unit weight of swell into height and considering that the structure is surrounded by backfill on either side that is on either face so we will assume rest condition because we assume that the backfill will be or the pressure will be applied uniformly throughout the surface considering that the structure will be stable because we have already checked for the stability so the structure is to be designed as a stable structure but in case if the structure is subjected to backfill from only one phase then we can go for active condition because it will try to overturn the structure but in case of the structure being surrounded by swell pressure on either side we will consider rest condition so we have to consider this term k that is coefficient now let us apply the load so the value of d will be k not into gamma s into h so pressure coefficient will take as 0 0.5 into considering saturated soil condition because we are considering uplift force as well so 19 as the unit weight of saturated soil height 7.1 67.45 and what will be the value of c so if we remember the value of c it was simply minus d divided by h that means we have to divide the value of d by the height of the force that we are considering so it will be minus 67 0.45 divided by 7.1 so this is the value of c don't forget to put negative sign use this that is zero negative values apply and check the joint pattern name apply okay now get previous selection or we can also select all this like this and we'll go to assign here we have area load surface pressure now it is earth pressure and we will apply top because earth pressure is to be applied from the outer face so it will be top as the red color indicates top face we have earth pressure as the joint pattern apply so you can see now the earth pressure being subjected from the outer face like this but the projection will be subjected to uniform soil load and we didn't consider soil projection for applying the joint pattern because the vertical load of the soil is not multiplied with any coefficient it is just a dead load in case of the water we selected the wall and slab together because there is no any coefficient the base pressure will be same for wall as well as the slab but in case of earth pressure the wall is subjected to an active condition or rest condition or passive condition but for the slab it is simply a dead load.